and welcome to You So You. My name is Zoe and this is my channel about all of the crafting things I get up to. I knit, I sew, I crochet, I'm learning to weave, I'm dabbling in, in spinning with a drop spindle and there's lots of other piece, bits and pieces that grab my attention from time to time. This week we're going to be a little bit craft specific and I'm going to show you what I've got on the loom. I have two looms so sit back, grab a cup of tea and enjoy. To any new viewers, welcome to my channel, and for returning viewers, welcome back. Um, I can be found all over the interwebs. Um, on Instagram, I am Zosie Mosey. On Ravelry, I am Zosie M. And I have a written blog over at usou.com. So feel free to follow along and find me in all of those places. I will put all the details on screen and in the description box down below. If you are a returning viewer, I expect you've probably already found the subscribe button. If you're a new viewer, I suspect you already know where it is as well. So feel free to give it a little bit of a tap uh, and the thumbs up as well if you like what you see here. Now, if you've been watching the show for a little while, you will know that I've been learning to weave on an inkle loom. So an inkle band, for those of you who don't know, is a narrow warp faced band. Um, it can be used for belts, ribbons, um, embellishments and all sorts of things. It has quite a long history, yeah, it's been seen in Viking clothing, Roman clothing and all sorts of places. Um, there's some discussion around about where the modern version of the Inkle Loom originates from, but suffice to say this is an old technique of weaving. It goes along with backstrap weaving and um, tablet weaving in terms of things that people tend to do at like medieval fairs and recreations and reenactments and that kind of thing. Um, so this is my inkle loom. I have an Ashford inklet which is a small loom. Um, you can get much bigger looms. The Ashford inkle loom is probably about twice the size. I'm not totally sure the exact uh, multiple that we have. Um, but it's a very simple loom. It's quite small, it's quite compact. They can, as I say, they can come in various sizes on the internet. I've seen some that are floor standing. Um, the size of the loom varies the length of the band that you can make on it. So this is my inklet, all warped up. I have done a short warp on this one, which means that um, I've come down here. I should take the shuttle out of the way. Just tuck that there for now, a little bit. So I've come down the side here um, with my warps before coming into the tension peg rather than weaving across the loom which would give me a longer band when I finished weaving it. The reason I did that was I wasn't quite sure how far my thread would go. Uh, for this band I am using embroidery uh, cotton. If I just move that forward you can see the, the warps coming over the top peg there and um, I've used stripes. Um, in kind of pastel colours and I am doing a tubular weave on this loom and um, so I will show you a closer up of how I am achieving that um, normally I would be weaving back and forth um, and creating a flat band like a ribbon that I could then use to stabilise shoulder seams if I wanted to or to decorate the outside of a, of a garment when I get good I'm planning to use it lots in my sewing but at the moment I'm still learning how to achieve it and um, this band actually goes round because of the way that I'm weaving it and so I will insert a close-up of this loom being woven for you um, and then once it's finished I will take it off the loom and show you what happens once you remove the band from the loom. For those of you that don't weave, warp is the long threads coming this way and weft is the one that goes across that she does the weaving bit that you are familiar with and um, warp faced bands this is the thread that shows the weft is all enclosed between it through the weaving um, whereas uh, like a cotton that's used for sewing that's going to have a mixture of warp and weft showing um, where it goes over under over under over under 
Um, so that's what we mean by a warp face band, is that this, this thread is showing um, when you weave it. Okay, so let's have a look and see how I'm getting on with this tubular weave. So hopefully you can see what's going on here. Um, try a new angle for these sorts of um, shots. So this is my inklet loom, um, complete with cat nibbles where they've been interested in the pegs, but they don't all come with that feature. Um, as you can see, I am all warped up with my embroidery floss. I'm going from green to blue to grey to purple to pink to this sort of flash of orangey brown. And I've already started weaving my tubular band. Now, as I say, when I'm normally weaving an inkle band, I am going back and forth with my shuttle through the sheds. The sheds are the um, threads when you lift and lower them through the heddles, and the heddles are little threads on this one that just hold it together. So normally I'd be going through and back, through and back, switching the, sh the sheds between each um, exchange. To do a tubular band, I'm going to go through from one side, push down as you do when you're weaving, pull it through, making sure it doesn't get caught on the peg. And then I'm going to return it either under or over, depending on which direction you're putting the twist in. And when I switch the sheds over, I'm going to come through from the same side that I did before. Push down and send it through. Okay, so I will just advance the warp and show you that again and then I'll show you what happens on the underside of this band. Making sure that my warps get caught as I tighten up the tension peg. I'll take my shuttle back to this side. Switch the shed over. Beat, which is when you push down. Pull through. Switch the sheds. Beat. And pull through. Switch the sheds. Beat. So that's what I'll be doing the whole way of this warp. Just make sure my tension peg is as tight as it can be. Uh, so I'll keep progressing in the same way. And what happens underneath is the green and the brown from the other side are coming together underneath. Um, it's not so great here for tension, but down here you can't actually see the weft at all, which is what you want in an inkle band. You don't want to be seeing the weft, you want to be seeing the warp because I say it's a warp facing band. So that is my tubular weave on my Ashford inklet loom. I um, hope you found that quite informative. I also have a, another loom. I have a frame lap loom that I've yet to use. It's quite a new purchase. Uh, it's a, a Trimits loom so it's relatively inexpensive. Um, there are some um, frame looms I've seen like on um, the Crafty Historian podcast. She's a frame loom which has a, a dowel that you can turn to lengthen the warp that you can put on the loom. I don't, I just have a simple frame loom. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to warp this up. Uh, we're gonna be learning together as I've not done it before, but the principle seems quite straightforward. So I'm gonna be putting the warp between here and here, holding it taut and weaving across. And I am going to be doing a project from this book, Weaving Within Reach. 
I haven't actually done any projects in this book yet, so this will be a nice little experiment. And um, there is a project in here that I've got a yarn band as a bookmark, uh, which is actually the picture rather than the writing, if I can. So there's these little coasters. Um, I may not do the band's coasters because I've got coasters to put my drinks on, but I'm quite interested in exploring the different weave types that they've used on each of these coasters and learning a little bit more about how the Warp and the Weft behaves. So that's going to be my first project on the frame loop. Um, this book, I think, is quite a, a good concept to it if you're interested in getting into weaving because it has projects in here that don't require a loom at all. Um, so if you're interested in finding out if you like weaving, it's probably a good one to have a little bit of a look at. In terms of whether it's an expert level book, probably not. It's, it's more of a beginner sort of focus. Um, and I'm not an expert weaver, so I can't sort of give a judgment on, on the quality of, of the projects at this point, having not done any yet. But it does seem to be quite a thorough introduction to the concepts behind weaving and how to get yourself started if you don't have a loom yet. Um, obviously, as I went through it, I'll give a bit more information about how I'm finding it um, in my little weaving updates from time to time. So without further ado, I am going to go and warp up my frame loom so you can see how that's done and we can learn together on the lap loom. Okay, so this is my frame loom. As you can see, it's quite a simple piece of kit. It came with a weaving comb, which will be what I use to beat uh, the weaving. It came with this thing, um, wanna say shed stick. Um, this basically rolls and adjusts the shed, like I was doing my hands on the inklet loom. It came with a long shuttle, which is wide enough to go across the two. And it also came with a weaving needle, which would be useful if I was doing uh, decorative wall hangings, any sort of tapestry. Um, so I'm not going to need that for this project, so I'm going to put it to one side. I also have here my weaving threads. These are bamboo. Um, I've got two different colours because I thought I'd experiment and see what it's like with two different colours coming through the weave. I'm going to use one for the warp and one for the weft. Um, so let's warp it up and see how we get on. Um, obviously I've got scissors as well to cut my threads. But, uh, you know what they look like. So it, the, all the instructions that I've read tell me to start in the bottom left corner for the, um, for the warp. So let's just pretend that I've got this rotated 90 degrees um, and we will call this the bottom left corner. Now it's telling me to use a clove hitch um, or to tie it on to the bottom left corner. So let's have a go and see if we can work out the clove hitch. Right, so with the tail of your yarn, make two loops in a row with the tail on top, which I'm coming from the working yarn. Bring the first loop made on top of the second loop, place them on the tooth. And tight it. Well, that seems to do the trick. So then I am going to go up to this tooth and this one. Exciting video coverage for you of me putting threads onto a wooden frame, which to get the gist I will probably speed it up. This is my first time warping a frame loom, so I am sure this will become a faster process as I get more used to it. I am trying to keep the threads under tension as I go. But, uh, I also don't want to get too, too tight because I'm going to be lifting and lowering uh, threads as I go. Uh, I'm just going to weave across the whole length of this loom, I think. Um, because I
as I can. So I'm going to use the fabric once it's done. I'm going to, the aim is to try a few different types of textures um, so that I can have a go and learn as I go. So the last instruction on warping the loom is to wrap the yarn around a couple of times to secure it. So that is a single warp done. However, for the project that I am doing, um, I'm going to be doing a double warp. So double warping means I'm going to have two warps in each notch. So I'm just going to bring that down and round this bit just so that I've got it coming at the same time. And I'm going to go back the way that I came. I think this is me following the instructions correctly. Who knows? I will learn as I go. I'm going to go back the other way and then tie off the warp at the other end. So um, bear with me a moment whilst I give you a thrilling video of me looping things around. Now what I'm noticing is that it's actually quite tricky to keep track of which tooth um, you're going into for the second warp. So I'm going to pay attention to that. It would be quite a simple fix if I went into the wrong tooth, but it could get very irritating very quickly. I might need to get a mat for when I'm doing this on camera, sort of the frame sliding around a little bit. Not that I'm intending on doing much warping on camera, which would be interesting for you guys to see the first one if you are thinking about learning to weave along with, with me. As I say, I am very much the beginner weaver. But, uh, you are more than welcome to join me on my journey. We can learn together and share the little tips and tricks that we learn along the way. Any mishaps are always good to share as well. That's how we learn. We learn from mistakes. Mistakes are good. Yeah, a lot of people forget that mistakes are good. Um, You'll probably notice that I very rarely talk about frogging and unpicking when I'm doing knitting and sewing. That is largely because, unless it's something major that's going to affect the fit or that I am going to get irritated by, I generally work with my mistakes and learn from them for next time. Um, an odd, the odd stitch out of place is not a massive issue to me. No judgement if you are bothered by that sort of thing. That's entirely up to you. Just for me, part of the delight of handmade is the imperfections. Okay, so that is this loom warped up with a double warp. Just going to secure the warp at this end. I will probably tie a knot in it once I've cut it just to be on the safe side because I don't think the wraps are necessarily going to be the most secure. I've got the scissors. Do you do that? Put things down and not know where they are. Also, it doesn't help when the cats walk past and move them. There we go, so that is a double warped loom. Well, actually, the looping round is probably going to be enough. There we go. I found with the bamboo when I've used it on the ink column that it's quite grippy, so it may well hold. There's my double warped loom. The next thing the instructions tell me to do is to insert a spacer. Now, this is something that I do on my ink loom as well. Um, Essentially, it gives me a nice straight edge to start with. Um, so I use bits cut off the packaging that the loom came in to to do that. Um, so 
I'll insert a spacer and I will probably do a little bit of, of scrap thread first just to um, get me started and make sure it's neat because I find um, on the ink alone that the initial bits can be a little bit on the uneven side when you when you weave it and you know, the instructions do tell me to put in a header and a footer basically on the top and bottom with scrap yarn to keep it neat so i need to put some thread on my shuttle so i use a different color for the header that's this color it's going to blend in with what i'm using for the I'm going to go from one end of the shuttle to the other. I'm going to put a fair, a fair bit on, but not like masses because this is just going to be a few rows top and bottom. Okay, so let's, let's see if I can get this shed stick in. I'm going to take it from underneath. I think that seems the logical way to do it. So here's my shed stick going in there. Okay, so you see as I roll my shed stick, should see my sheds lift and raise. Not sure what's going on at that end. There we go. Okay, so as I get started, I'll take a little bit of care and attention to make sure that things are going properly. So here's my shuttle with a little bit of the darker yarn in. So let's create a shed. Just make sure I've got alternate warps, raising and lowering, or oh, something like right there. Two in there, greedy. Well, this is quite an easy fix. I imagine as the weaving gets more established that will be less of an issue okay so I am going to put a spacer in this is my spacer it's just a bit of cardboard cut off the box the loom came in the reason I have used the box the loom came in is largely because I know it's going to be wide enough so it's just going to give me a straight edge to get my first couple of rows on it is also going to make sure that I don't weave too close to the ends. So that way I'm going to have a length of, of, of threads that I can use when I'm finishing up to secure to make sure the weaving doesn't come undone. So shuttle, spacer, shed stick, here we go. Take a length off there, send my shuttle through along the spacer. I'll move my shed stick down a little bit, I think, just to bring the shed closer to the spacer. And I'm going to hold thread as I bring my shuttle through. Hmm. Well, that's not gone right there. Let's take that out of there. I've gone over some of the ones I should have gone under there because things have dropped down into my shed stick. But if you're watching and you can see it, 
then you can fix it. Okay, so now I'm going to roll my shed stick and switch my shed round, making sure I've got alternate warps going down. I'm going to get my comb. And now we're going to come back this way. I would come in closer to the shed stick, but the tripod is just in the way a little bit at the moment. So it's making sure we're going over and under. I don't want to get too tight on the other end just yet. Change my shed round. And obviously you can just weave under and over if you wish. That's what I would be doing with a tapestry needle anyway. A weaving needle. Okay, just make sure that is... two rows. I'm going to do a few rows just to make sure I've got a good start. But that's basically the process. take this one row out because if you see it's not actually hooking on at the end and obviously I don't want to if anything come undone so I'm just going to come under there and through just to make sure I come right the way to the edge of the fabric I will get better doing this as I practice more I am sure and I will probably get faster as well okay so I'm going to get this header done and get the fabric started and I will update you next time do a weaving update on how this fabric is progressing and which different types of weave I have attempted. Okay, there we go, that's my shuttle set up ready for me to go. So until next time. Okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you found my little inserts on the weaving interesting and informative this week. Uh, I am intending on doing re fairly regular uh, weaving updates. Obviously, life gets in the way a little bit. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since my last video um, but I'm hoping to get back on a regular schedule now so let's see how often I get some weaving in uh, hopefully at least once every couple of months if not once a month I'll be able to bring you some weaving content next week I have some finished object objects to show you that I've already finished but I'm saving up for next week and uh, hopefully there'll be some more to join them um, so next week will be a little bit more knitting and sewing focused um, but I will update you on, on any weaving developments as well. In the meantime, have a great week. Like and subscribe down below. Follow me all over the interwebs. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>